oh it's so nice to just be on my bike after just eight hours of driving a fucking commercial vehicle you know you can't really I mean well the bus they gave me for for this assignment um it's actually fast it's it's pretty much think of like economy car fast like it doesn't accelerate like fucking crazy, but it's enough to get you where you want to be and exactly where you want to be. The only issue is the thing is 40 feet long. So you got to be mindful of your braking distances and and, um, and um, just the cars around you. You know, normally with a car, you're literally, your car is literally a car length. You can There can only be one car to the left and right of you. Uh, as opposed to a 40 foot bus, that's about three to four car lanes. So you gotta be watching out for, you know, your blind spots and shit. You can't be chucking around the, the, uh, the bus with like ultra confidence because there can always be someone that's stuck into your blind spot. But despite that, my bus is um, how do you say this? I'm not even sure how to explain it. I don't want to say dangerously fast, but it's inappropriate for me. The youngest driver in the fucking department by 10 years, they gave me the fastest shuttle that we have. Well, not shuttle, but the fastest bus, which is like, all right, I, fuck it. Give me, give me all 400 pound feet of torque, whatever the fuck the metric is. There's a bike in front of me, it looks like a Harley. And he's slowing down. Oh yeah, it's a Harley. I'll give him his space, I don't want to be making more enemies. Out here. Plus he's not going that fast because he doesn't have a helmet. Or a proper helmet. But yeah, that, I'm, I'm very grateful for the bus I have. <laughs> I mean, the last bus I had actually had a throttle delay of like two seconds. So I would have to like anticipate and pretty much memorize when lights would turn green and stuff just so I don't lag it. But uh, despite that, it was a competent, you know, the brakes, the retarders and everything on that bike. I mean, on that bus was awesome. On the previous one, it was just the throttle was lacking. It, it was actually a different model of bus so it weighed more than the one I have right now but um, this current bus it does have its issues the brake system is uh, probably not safe to drive but I let a mechanic know I told him the parameters in which I think the the brakes failed you know the the, the brake test but they say it's fine so, yeah, I just told them, like, hey, I don't, not that I don't feel comfortable, but, like, hey, like, if I get stopped by CHP and they see this shit, I don't think it's going to fly. And they're like, no, that's fine. But hopefully, you know, I just keep on writing down the reports and at least then it's acknowledged through the, the through those inspection reports that I'm, I'm aware of how shitty the brakes are, but... Our mechanics, which are more, um, I guess, all right, just take the fucking lane, why don't you? Our mechanics that are, uh, I guess, more qualified to, you know, in deciding whether the brakes are safe or not, you know, I, I, I'm going by their word pretty much, but I'm, I've just covered my ass. I don't like the brakes. They have a bit of brake lag, which is absolutely fucking dangerous on a, any fucking vehicle, let alone, let alone a commercial vehicle. But that and the the air brakes leak like fucking crazy, about like 10 or 15 psi on the static static air leakage test. So 
Yeah. You know, as long as the engine's, you know, always building up pressure, I don't, you know, whatever. I guess technically I always have brakes. But, uh. Oh, yeah, and the, uh, um, oh, what is it, the, the parking brake test failed. You know, depending on which, which, um, Uh, depending on which tank you you uh, you reference, you know the primary tank can pass the um, the uh, the parking brake test at around like 45 psi, I believe. But the fucking by that point, the the secondary tank is already at zero because again it leaks, and I don't think it's you know the sensors are connected correctly on that thing. Uh, that, the inter rear door interlock fails, you know, the parking brake engages on that thing, but, um, the, the throttle still has power, which it shouldn't, you know, when you press on the gas, there shouldn't be any power. But again, you know, in... You know, I'm sacrificing my brakes, which I shouldn't, for speed, for acceleration. And holy shit, this is the fastest, like, bus, like, actual bus I've driven. It's fucking nice. Um, I mean, I mean there's nothing special about it, it just weighs less room. Oh yeah, and the suspension. The suspension is fucked. Uh, I don't know what it is, the struts or some kind of thing that's mounted onto the... One of the mounting hardwares to the... Onto the, uh, the the bus is broken, so like it sways like left and right, like your tail swings. Like I don't know how to explain it. It's strange when I'm when I'm braking hard that you feel that something's up with the suspension. <laughs> uh, that's all I have to really say. But I'm no mechanic, so I don't. I wouldn't even know what that would feel like. But from what one of my one of my coworkers told me that. Some part of the suspension is broken, like those leaf springs or whatever the fuck they're called. Those like they just, they just look like stacks of like iron plates on top of each other that make like an upside down pyramid. That p portion of the of the suspension is broken. I don't know. I don't know if it is. Yeah, it, it acts kind of ridiculous. Yo, who's this? Is that a Ducati? Oh no, it's just a Triumph. It's a Triumph, mate! Ducatis are indeed kick ass. Um. I'm not sure if I'd own one though. You know, I don't need all that much, all that power that Ducatis, even their entry level bikes, produce too much fucking power. But like the Penagali V2. What I've been told, it's a comparable, like, sport bike, despite it being, you know, producing God knows how much power, and being so lightweight. That, that's what pisses me off about this fucking bike. You know, it's, it's, it's a new bike. It's been developed in 2014. That's when super, or, I'm sorry, not, that's when sport bikes have already been figured the fuck out. Yet, it weighs 450 pounds stock, like. What the fuck? Where, where's all this weight coming from? Like, you can't make the, the argument that, oh, it's an inline four, therefore it weighs more. When you can get, like, a Jixxer 600, R6, any fucking, you know, super sport equivalent, and it weighs 100 pounds less. Like, where the fuck is all this weight coming from? And plus, it makes 90 horsepower at max stock. Like, again, where the fuck is this power coming from? I mean, where is this weight coming from? 
If it's not to produce power, like, where is it? Is it in the frame? I, I, I don't even know if frames are made out of aluminum, to be honest. But I know this, this one's made out of steel. But yeah, that pissed me off. I saw, I think, a Pentagali V2, which, you know, produces almost, I mean, I'm pretty sure it produces almost double the horsepower that this thing does at a double the, the displacement. Okay, he's not following me. And it weighs 100 pounds less. Like, what the fuck? Where, where is all this weight at? The, where? Like, I, I can't even comprehend. And that thing has two less cylinders. Like, what the fuck? And V2s are inherently, like, less powerful than inline four. so again, where is all this weight at, like... You know, supposedly it uses the same engine block as the CBR 600RR, which weighs about 30 pounds less than this thing. And, oh, mm, No, not even then, because the 50cc's... Cubic centimeters of displacement difference between the two of them. All they do is add a bit more stroke. It doesn't. You're not. You're not. Um. <laughs> fuck, I lost my train of thought. You're not. <laughs> for that amount of stroke to make extra, 50 extra cc's, you're not. Uh, it doesn't add 30 pounds. Like, where the fuck? Again, where? <laughs> it's got less hardware on this thing. It's, it's got a single headlight. It doesn't have two of them like the CBR. Maybe a bigger tank. Maybe I don't know, dude. It, it cannot be from the fucking tank. I don't think so. Cause it. Cause having parked this bike next to a CBR 600 RR, the tank, the tanks are fucking nearly identical. So I don't, I don't understand where the, I get where the weight's coming from. But I don't know. I mean, the CBR costs, I think, twelve to thirteen thousand dollars. MSRP, after dealer markups and bullshit, maybe sixteen thousand dollars. This thing, MSRP for eighty five hundred dollars, eighty five hundred. So, after you know bullshit fees, especially right now because of COVID, it might as well be fourteen thousand dollars. Because the last time I checked for the CBR six fifty R, the twenty twenty one model, it was like. I think they were the dealership was asking fourteen fifty, which is like, you know, I wanted to get rid of this bike and get that one because of the styling. Granted, I didn't want the ABS, and that's what stopped me from buying it. But holy shit, for the same bike, I'm going to be paying, um, let me do the uh, six thousand dollars. That's how. That's almost how much the fucking the bike cost me uh, pre quarantine, because prior to the quarantine. They couldn't get rid of this fucking model. So they were letting it go at MSRP after, even after taxes and fees and everything. I paid exactly $8,500 cash at the dealer. Because they just want to get the fuck, get rid of it. At, uh, what, what was the court thing? 2020? 2020? I, mm, yeah, 2020. This is the 2018 model and it was sitting on the, the showroom for, uh, two years. Or maybe a year and a half. Couldn't get rid of it. But all of a sudden, when the 2019 model came out, the CBR 650R, and, you know, that's when people started to realize, oh shit, this is actually a pretty good engine. And, you know, they started, you know, I don't know, dude, fucking, I'm done.